Okay guys, hi students. Uh, my son Timothy, he's working the camera today. So he's starting and stopping the video. So he's, so far he's doing a good job. So he's pretty upset. I've made him stop watching his cartoon. He has to stop watching Scooby-Doo so that daddy can do his daily reading. So I will be reading, eh, come say hi to me. I'll be reading chapters nine and chapters 10 of Among the Hidden. And then when I call Timmy in Russian, he will stop the camera. Tim, say hi. hi. Hey, guys. So let's begin. Remember, suspense. I have to go back to chapter 8 just to read the last sentence. Because it's suspense. A face. A child's face. In a house where two boys already lived. So he has found that his neighbors that are adjacent to him are in the same situation. They have two boys already, but now they have a third. And if it's a third, it's a shadow child. Okay, chapter nine. Luke was so surprised, he lost his balance. Dimi, Timmy, Svet, yes, the Timosha, Svet. Luke was so surprised that he lost his balance and almost fell backwards off the trunk. And by the time he recovered and righted himself, the face was gone. He had imagined it. Was it just one of the sports family's brothers come home early from school? The kids got sick like Dad said, or they decided to play hooky. Hooky meaning uh, skipping school. Luke tried to remember every de detail of the face he'd seen or thought he'd seen, and it had been younger than either of the sports family brothers. Softer, hadn't it? Well, maybe it was a thief or a maid come early. No, it had been a child. Uh, well, he didn't even let himself think what another child in that house would be. Um, he stared for hours at the sports family's house, but no face reappeared. Nothing happened until six, when the two sports family boys drove in in their Jeep, unloaded their football gear, and carried it into the house. They didn't run out screaming about being robbed. And he'd seen no thief leave. He'd seen no maid leave. At 6.30, Luke reluctantly climbed down from his perch when he heard his mother's knock on the door. He sat down on his bed and muttered, distracted, come in. And she rushed in to hug him. Luke, I'm sorry. I know you were just trying to help and everything is amazingly clean and I'd love it if you could do this every day, but your father thinks, I mean, you, you can't. Luke was so busy thinking about the face in the window that at first he couldn't figure out what she was talking about. Oh, yeah, the bread the house cleaning, the radio. Yeah, that's okay. But it wasn't, and it never would be, and his anger came back. And why did his parents have to be so careful? Why didn't they just lock him in one of the trunks in the attic and be done with it? Can't you talk to him? Luke asked, and can't you convince him? Mother pushed Luke's hair back from his face. I'll try, she said. But you know, he just he's just trying to protect you, and we can't take any chances. Timichka, daj vadichki. Even if the face in the window of the sports family house was another, another third child, so what? Luke and the other kid could live right next door all their lives and never meet. Luke might never see the other kid again, and he'd certainly never see Luke. Luke lowered his head. What am I supposed to do? Stakanchik, come. Yes, well, there's nothing for me to do. Am I supposed to just sit in this room the rest of my life? And mother was stroking his hair now. It made him feel itchy and irritable. Oh, Loki, you can do so much. Read and play and sleep whenever you want. Believe me, I'd like to live a day of your life right about now. Uh, no, you wouldn't, look, mother. He muttered. He said it so softly that his mother, you know, surely she couldn't hear and he knew she wouldn't understand. If there was a third child in the sports family, would he understand? Did he feel the way Luke did? Mm -hmm. and now we're going to move on to chapter 10. Spasiba. Spasiba. Skaji. Pajosta. No, to me. Spasiba. 
When Luke went down to supper, he saw that mother had set his two loaves of bread out on the china plate she used for holidays and special occasions. She was showing off the bread the way she used to tape up the crooked drawings Matthew and Mark brought home from school when they were little. But something had gone wrong, and maybe Luke hadn't used enough yeast, or he'd kneaded the dough too much or too little, and the loaves had turned out flat. And they looked lopsided and pathetic in the center of the table. <laughs> That's like me trying to make bread. I tried it last month. Disaster. Luke wished Mother had just thrown them away. It's cold out now. Nobody would notice if we pulled the shades. Why can't I sit at the table with all of you? He asked when he reached the bottom of the stairs. Oh, Luke, Mother started. Someone might see your shadow through the shade, Dad said. Well, they wouldn't know it was mine, Luke said. Well, there'd be five. and Someone might get suspicious, Mother said patiently. Luke, we're just trying to protect you. How about a big slice of your bread? There's cold beef and canned beans, too. Resignedly, Luke sat down on the stairs. Matthew asked about the auction Dad had gone to. I drove all that way for nothing, Dad said disgustedly. I waited four hours for the tractors to come up, and then I couldn't even afford the first bid. Well, at least you got home in time to, to fix that back fence before dark. Mother said, cutting the bread. And yell at me, Luke thought bitterly. What was wrong with him? Nothing had changed, except he'd maybe seen a face that maybe belonged to someone like him. Matthew and Mark suddenly noticed the bread Mother was doling out. What's wrong with that? Mark asked. Well, I'm sure it'll taste fine, Mother said. It's Luke's first try, Luke muttered. And my last, too softly for anyone to hear. There were advantages to sitting on the other side of the room from everyone else. Luke made bread, Mark said incredulously. Yuck! Yeah! And I put special poison in one of the loaves. That only affects 14-year-olds, Luke said, and pantomimed, pantomimed to death, clutching his hands around his own neck, letting his tongue hang out of his mouth, and lolling his head to the side. If you're nice to me, I'll tell you which loaf is safe. That shut Mark up, but earned Luke a frown from Mother. Luke felt strange about the joke anyway, and of course, he'd never poison anyone, but if something happened to Matthew or Mark, would Luke have to hide anymore? Would he become the public second son, free to go out to town and to school and to everywhere else that Matthew and Mark went? Could his parents find some way to explain a new child already 12 years old? It wasn't something Luke could ask, and he felt guilty just thinking about it. Mark was making a big ceremony out of bringing the bread to his mouth. I'm not scared of you, he taunted. He took a big bite, and he swallowed with great difficulty and pretended to gag. Water! Water! Quick! He gulped down half his glass and glared at Luke. Take sliced poison, all right? Luke bit into his bread. It was dry and crumbly and tasteless. Not like mother's at all, and everyone knew it. Even dad and mother had pained expressions on their faces as they chewed. Dad finally pushed his slice away. It's okay, Luke, he said. I'm not sure I'd want any son of mine getting too good at baking anyhow. That's what a man gets married for. Ooh. Matthew and Mark guffaw. Getting married soon, Luke? Mark teased. Sure, Luke said, struggling to sound as the devil may care as Mark. But don't think I'd invite you to the wedding. He felt a cold, hard lump in his stomach. That wasn't the bread. Of course, he'd never get married or do anything. He'd never leave the house. Mark switched to teasing Matthew, who evidently did have a girlfriend. Luke watched the rest of the family laughing. May, may I be excused? Everyone turned to him in surprise, and usually he was the last one to make that request. Mother often begged Matthew and Mark, can't you wait and talk to Luke a little bit longer? Done already, Mother asked. Well, I'm not very hungry, Luke said. Mother gave him a worried look, but nodded anyway. Luke went to his room and climbed under the stool by the back vents. In the dark, it was easier than ever to see into the houses of the new neighborhood. Their windows were lit up against the night. Some families were eating like his. 
he could see one set of four people around a dining room table and one set of three. Some families had their curtains or shades drawn, but sometimes the material was thin and he could still see shadows of the people inside. Irisuda. Only the sports family had all their windows totally blocked, covered by heavy blinds. So it's kind of a family just like his. Their blinds are totally covered. Why? They're hiding something. So again, we have to figure out who did Luke see? That soft face of a child. And it's not the two brothers. So it looks like, it's pretty obvious, this little foretaste, that we're looking at another shadow child. Thanks, guys, for listening, and stay tuned for the next two chapters. Moshish.